Good morning, this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh with Florida Inshore Fishing Charters and Mosquito Lagoon Site Fishing Charters located here in East Central Florida on the world famous Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River, Cocoa Beach, New Smyrna Beach, Daytona, and here in Oak Hill, Florida. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video on how to um, put fishing line, spool your uh, light tackle gear here. Uh, today's video I'm going to show you how uh, we mostly use braid here in the flats in Florida. Um, this is a spinning reel, a conventional spinning rod and reel. Um, it happens to be a Shimano Sustain 2500. Um, the way I'm going to do this is you can pretty much do it on any kind of spinning reel. The, uh, and it just, you know, just basically what I'm doing here, your particular reel might be a little bit different. I just happen to be using a Shimano and I use Shimano tackle. So a uh, couple of things that you're going to need first off are a razor blade and I just use like a paint scraping razor blade it's long because you're going to need that to cut the braid unless you got a really good pair of uh, braid cutter um, I find that a razor blade does really well because it can get really close uh, to the cuts um, we've got the leader that I'm going to eventually put on 40 pound or I'm sorry 40 yards 20 pound test uh, I either use the Vanish or the Seagour uh, 10, 15, 20, 25 pound, 40, 60, and 100 pound, depending on if it's redfish, trout, black drum, bigger one for the tarpon and along the docks. So we got that. I'm gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to back the spool once we take the line off with some 10 pound or 8 pound, just basic mono. Um, there's no reason to put a whole uh, um, this all the way on there. I usually put 20, 30, 40 yards of mono on there then top it off with the braid. It doesn't slip um, and it keeps, it, you know, it just, it, it, you don't have to use all 150 yards. Today I'm going to put this whole thing on there because um, it's only 10 pound uh, equal to 2 pound diameter. It holds around 200 uh, yards. So I'm going to probably about 30, 40 yards of this on. Then the whole spool of the Power Pro. And this is the new super slick stuff. If I can put it in there. So we're going to do that. Um, of course, while we're doing it, let's oil it up with the rim oil. Um, I just did a video on that. And then, of course, uh, a couple of tools you're going to need. Just some snips, needle nose pliers, and then a screwdriver to get into the port. So, the first thing that we're going to do is let's take the line off. Uh, I'm not going to show that on video. I'm sure everybody can do that. That's not rocket science. Uh, I do ask one thing. When you take it off of there, Let's be sure to dispose of this properly. Just do not put it in a trash can. Please, please, please. In the state of Florida, if you're doing this, there are places you can take it to. At most docks, they have a line recycling pin. Um, I usually keep mine in a Walmart bag, and over the years, once it gets big enough, if I can recycle it, I recycle it. If not, when I've got like a big bonfire going or some kind of fire, I will put it in there and burn it. Um, you do not want this stuff winding up in the trash and at landfills. It can be extremely dangerous to animals. So just please, just remember to dispose of it properly. If you're in an area that you're not sure, contact your local uh, Department of Natural Resources or Fish and Wildlife Service and ask them what to do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera real quick. I'm going to take this line off and we're going to show you how to go from here. Okay, we got the line off. Um, just remember, please dispose of that properly, uh, recycle it. Uh, matter of fact, I was just looking at my bag. I'm going to probably go down to the dock and they just put in one of the uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, recycling bins down there. I'll probably put it in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and oil it real quick. I did another video on this, so I'm not going to really show you how to do it, but, um, you know, on this particular reel, let's see if I can turn it this way, get it against the wall there. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to reel, oil all the specific locations, you know. Just look at your manufacturer specs and your directions and, uh, you know, per your particular rod and reel, you know, just oil it up that way. So let me do that real quick and then what we'll do is we'll put the spool back on there and we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you how to tie that on there. We'll put on some line and uh, then we'll tie the leader on there and or the Power Pro and then we'll go from there. Okay, we have, we have oiled the um, reel up, and also wanted to make a note when you do this. You know, this is a perfect time to inspect your rod and reels. You know, go over them, look for cracks, look for something that's wrong, because you'd rather find out now than when on a big fish. So, okay, what I've done is the other thing that you're going to want. I really can't show you this. It might be hard to show you this one. 
Um, I've got just a trash can here, a little office trash can. Uh, what I did is take the bag out, I threw the spool in there so that it's not rolling around the house or anything. But what I did is I went ahead and strung the rod. Um, I've got the line right here. It's hard to see it, and this is going to be hard to show you. But I do have some knot videos that uh, you can check out for each knot that I'm doing here. Now, the knot that I'm going to do here to the spool to tie this to is just a basic cinch knot, just a basic loop knot. Um, you know, just go around and uh, just make the little loop. Just a basic, basic knot. It really doesn't matter because it's not, it should never get down to that end where that knot's going to be effective. I just needed to hold it there for a for just a couple loops till the line grabs. And other than that, I really don't even need a knot right there. Now, the first thing that you're gonna do is don't make the mistake of putting it on like that. Make sure your bale is flipped and uh, put it on that way. So let's do this basic knot real quick. And it's really gonna be hard to show you this knot, but what you'll have to do is just go onto my videos and you can find it um, and look at all the knots that I've done. Uh, spider hitch. So I got the basic knot right here. Just you really cannot see it with the with the line being clear. And I don't have a way to zoom in with this camera right now because I'm doing this by myself. So you got the knot on there and just kind of cinch down on it. You can see it sticking out there a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just trim that off down there and then we're gonna put on probably 30 or 40 yards of that. Not much. You want to make sure that when you put this braid on there that you're not short, don't short yourself. You know, you don't want to put on only five yards of the mono, then all of a sudden you put this on, you can still put on an extra hundred yards because you, you don't want to join these two. You want to keep this whole. So I'm going to put on probably a little bit more mono than I need. I'd rather have 10, 15 yards of this left over. Because in reality, you're only really going to use maybe, maybe, um, you know, when you're on a fish, maybe 30, 40 yards of this at a time, if, if, if that. But it's good to have extra on there. So let's go ahead and spool that, and we'll cut that, then we'll join the two. I'm going to wind up joining the Power Pro to the Mono by using a Uni to Uni. So let me pause this again, and let's get that on there. Okay, so we put on uh, 30, 40, 50 yards of the mono. Um, this happens to be 10 pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off, you know, cut it off. Cut a piece off. Go ahead and put that away in my little tackle line box there. Now what we're going to do here is this is where I'm going to take the Power Pro braid right here, the 10 pound braid. I'm going to join it to the mono here using a uni to uni. I'm going to do um, probably three loops. I'm not going to do a lot because then again, I never plan on it getting down that far on a fish. Um, usually I tell my clients all the time, if you start to see the backing, we're in trouble. We need, we're doing something wrong. Something's happened. They've touched the drag or I've never been able, I've never had to get down that far unless the line breaks. <laughs> which that happens to all of us. So again, I've got videos out there to show you how to do the uni to uni um, or double uni, what they're called sometimes. So I'm not even going to show you how to tie that. I'm going to tie that real quick. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this spool in the trash can, the little white can here so it doesn't roll all over the living room floor here. And I'll show you how to do the end product here from when I put all that on and where it's just enough, not quite coming over to the edge of the spool right here. We'll do a spider hitch with the braid. Again, I've got a video for that. And then I'll tie on about three feet of the 20 pound leader here. And then I'm gonna go out and try to do some fishing this afternoon. So let's finish this up real quick here and we're almost done. Now I do wanna say one thing before I start putting the braid on top of the backing here. Let's see if I can get down here. The knot right here that you can see right at the tip of my fingernail you want to try to cut that as close as possible on the mono side just for the fact that that little piece of mono that sticks up there and it's really hard to see it is when it's on the spool you don't want that to stick up like a spike and then grab the line every now and then and that's why I like to use a razor or if you have a really good pair of cutters 
Now the the uh, the braid you can leave a half of a millimeter sticking out because it's a thread like you know it's synthetic so it's not going to grab like a rose thorn or something the line so I wanted to show you that real quick before I spool this so let me get it spooled we'll get that on there and I'll get right back to you here okay we got the braid on here went on perfectly I had about 30 yards left over which is about fine um, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the rest of the um, the uh, ending on this here, we're going to do a spider hitch knot. Again, I have a video for that you can check out. And then I'm going to put on about three thirds of the leader. And on the leader, I'm going to use a uh, uni to uni. The spider hitch, basically, for those of you that don't know, um, when you join this line to the leader, you want to try to make it equal diameter. In other words, if I take my finger here and try to put it to my pinky my finger is a little bit bigger around than the pinky. Same thing with the diameter here. I'm trying to join two lines of equal or similar line together. So a spider hitch will just take this line and double it up so that it's that wide. Um, sometimes people use it for a shock, it, you know, shock leader. It kind of serves two purposes, but I do it mostly for the uh, equalness of the diameter. Um, now I'm gonna tell you a little special trick also when you're doing all this kind of stuff. One of your best things to do is, normally when I do this, I don't do it here in the living room. I'm doing this just for tutorial purposes and the video end of it. Um, one of the best things to do is I like to go out into my side yard, and when I take the line off, once you get your line on there and it's perfect, you know, because there's a lot of guesswork when you're putting on the backing. You don't want to waste a lot of line. So I'll take this out there and I'll stretch it out across, you know, all 200 yards across the field somewhere, a park or wherever. And then when I go put the other line on there, I can measure it out well, how much I'm going to use exactly. That way, when you go buy your braid and stuff like that, you're not buying 300 yards of braid and using 285 yards of it. And then you got 115 yards left over that will do you no good. So you can kind of time it down and measure it correctly. So there's a little tip for you. But let me go ahead and put this on there, and we're pretty much done. Like I said, the ending of this is just the spider hitch, then the leader, then tie the lure on or hook or whatever you're going to do. And again, you can look at all those knots, the canoe man loop knot, the perfection loop knot, the uni to uni, and the spider hitch, all on my knot videos. And you just put them in conjunction with what we did right here, along with the oiling and all that, and you have your salt water or fresh water rig up. And there you go. Again, again, it is Captain Drew Cavanaugh with Florida Inshore Fishing Charters, and I want everybody to have a great day. Thank you.